Thank you. All right, then, now the announcement yesterday by the president reappointing the INEC chairman for a second five-year term did say many, got many saying, well, he's broken the jinx, the 22-year jinx of getting a second term. But what does that mean in the scheme of things? What should we expect from the INEC chairman or INEC or the National Assembly at that, even the president? How about us, the electorate? moving forward. So we've got Mr. Fred Zako here with us. He's a legal practitioner. Good morning and thank you for coming on today. Good, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here. Well, that announcement uh, well, certainly makes feelings about it uh, in terms of what does that mean moving forward. So for, for you, how did you internalize that announcement? For me, I saw it coming. I wasn't uh, surprised. Yes, I saw it coming. What, he's done so well? Well, I saw it coming. I wasn't surprised because um, one, Mr. President, is, um, has this um, knack for not wanting to drop anybody. I mean, that is his person. For reasons I don't know why. And the two, um, once it, it comes to politics, it's neither yes nor no. It's neither here nor there. It's either one is benefiting and the other is crying, or one is crying and the other is benefiting. And once it's politics, there is no direct course. There is no direct route to it. Some people will say, Professor Mahmoud is the best INEC chairman because his tenure was a kind of benefit to them. Some will tell you that he's the worst INEC chairman because he is never uh, consistent with his policies and programs as chairman of INEC, a leader of the electoral empire. But what would you tell us? Well, I will tell you what I, what I, what I, what I feel. And what I feel, what I feel is that he has a, a lot of responsibilities on his shoulders going forward. What I, what I tell you is futuristic. Uh, going in the past, I'll tell you what others feel, and then I'll tell you what I feel going forward. Because he, 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 he having been, if he is reconfirmed, which I feel, this Senate that we have, we just uh, reconfirm him. I have no doubt about that. If he, when he's reconfirmed, he should know that there is a historical trajectory that we have noticed with Anek um, um, headship. In the first tenure, they will want to, to satisfy their appointer. In the second tenure, they will want to satisfy the nation. And um, in the first tenure of Mahmoud Jaga, so many, I mean, uh, Mahmoud uh, Yakubu, so many people felt he tried to satisfy his appointer. Uh, going by all the things we saw in uh, uh, build up to 2019 general elections, try the presidential election, and then the aftermath. And um, now that he's uh, going for a second um, term, which we would most likely get, he will now have an opportunity to serve the country. And what do I mean? Because it is the only opportunity he has to write his name on gold. If he fails, he will go down in infamy as being one of, um, history will not be kind to him. Today, Professor Jaga is moving around the whole world as a good citizen, as one who has helped to deepen the democracy of Nigeria. And uh, that, that's a very big plus for him. If he did not handle the 2015 election, at least to the perception of many, as being good enough, he wouldn't have that strength, and that moral strength to move around. And nobody will give him such honor and accolade as he's enjoying today. Professor Mahmoud, if he does not get this appointment, this reappointment, his, his output in 2019 was not good enough. But we now found out that after 2019, after the Kogi election, he seems to be improving. The INEC under him seems to be improving, especially with the Edo election, with the Ondo election, and we expect that if he was learning the ropes in the past five years, he cannot claim to be learning the ropes in the next five years. So what do we expect from we him? We expect a better forward. INEC chairman. For we expect instance. a better INEC under him. Yeah. We expect a better electoral process a better output in election, and the major challenges are coming. There will be by-elections in, in a few states in, uh, across the country. There will be a seemingly major election in Anambra State next year, and there will be a, a major, the huge election 
in 2023. But the, the, I did say Minec hasn't been firing on all salve, or you may want to agree with that or disagree. For instance, uh, when it comes to um, managing the entire process, uh, you know, INEC is not particularly firing on all salvo. Some expect that INEC should be monitoring the political parties, which a number of people say they are not doing effectively well enough, monitoring their finances, they are not doing that well enough, um, prosecuting electoral offenses, part of their functions, they are not doing that well enough, as, as some people you know, might want to say. But in electioneering is what you are talking about, that the electoral process itself is what INEC is improving on. If that's the only thing, perhaps we would be satisfied. But then we, have, we still have cases where pre-election matters affect post-election results. Absolutely. And in this same election, and it's still under the same INEC chairman. So again, to, to Chamberlain's question, what are we to expect if the law remains the same and this improvement is, is experienced? Well, don't forget, don't forget there are three major stakeholders in any electoral process. The, the voters, the umpire, and the security agencies. There are also responsibilities that INEC is supposed to carry out. And some of those responsibilities are already, already coded in our laws under the Electoral Act and then other laws establishing INEC. You alluded to the fact that there are some other responsibilities that INEC is expected to be carrying out, i.e. managing the political parties, inspecting them, ensuring that there is probity, ensuring that pre-election matters are, 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 do not affect the post-election matters. But those are essentially the issues that the political parties themselves will have to do. There must be some form of division of labor. Hunters are not holding brief for INEC because they, 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 they are the major... Some would yes. argue that right uh, now you are holding brief no, for no, INEC because... Not, because no, not holding well, pardon me, pardon yeah. me. You know that it's the law that yes. empowers INEC yes. to do these things. It is the you law. don't expect... If, if everyone was going to obey the law, there would be no need for the police. INEC has for a long time asked that we set up a literal offenses court, for example that will try electoral offenders. Is that an admittance on the part of INEC? It is an admittance are... uh, on their part that they need more cooperation from the judiciary. That they need more cooperation from the judiciary and more government to ensure that when matters, when are taken to court on account of electoral offenses, that most matters are given expeditious trial. But you find out that politicians themselves who benefit from electoral misfortunes of, of, of citizens from such act that would have taken them to court. We now either, either subterraneanly scuttle the process of, of trial or, or ensure that those people don't get uh, punished adequately. So, are you that, suggesting, that, are you yes, suggesting me yes. that there are defective structures in the system that are supporting or not encouraging INEC to perform all of its statutory functions? So many defective functions. Yes, they are. But one can say that those functions are functions that INEC, INEC itself should be able to, to pull through and ensure that they work properly. But when it comes to issue of, of justice and adjudication, INEC has nothing to do there because theirs is, is, is to lay the problem bare and then expect those who are in authority to take it off from there. That's not what the, that's not what the police is saying. The police is saying that our job is to investigate and hand the case files to INEC. INEC, to INEC job is to take the case file to the court. Not and to, when they take not to prosecute, not the, to prosecute, of course, to take the case file to the court. And but how and so effectively has INEC that is done the judiciary that is left to handle that? It's judiciary. Is it and the judiciary that is supposed to provide the law, the lawyers? It is the legislature that's supposed to provide the law. The judiciary should no, now is interpret it. The judiciary, it. Is it the judiciary that's supposed to provide the lawyers that INEC would use? To it is INEC case? that should provide the lawyers. But when INEC is now crying that they don't have enough, what do you do? Will you continue to spend the entire money on INEC? So back there to the question that issues. I asked the other time, is it yes. then an admittance on the part of INEC that they are incapable of doing all that the law requires them to do? INEC cannot admit that they are incapable. Of course, you and I know that they will never admit. So why then are they but, asking but, for an Electoral Offenses Commission? They are asking for an Electoral Offenses Commission because they have been crying that even the ones they have taken to court have not received the proper uh, judicial pronouncement because of the delays associated with it occasioned by the, by the cog being put in the wheel of progress by politicians. Politicians that are, that are beyond their control. 
So it is a so society... That, mean that those politicians are, you know, flouting the law, they are contravening the laws and no one can hold them? They are, they are, they are, uh, the right word is that they are subjugating the laws. That's the right word. They may not be flouting it openly, but they are undermining the legal process. They are undermining the judicial process. And I can tell you that, that the many politicians undermine the judicial process. Who armed the talks, for example? Is it INEC? Who arms them? Who causes the problems during the elections? When you go for primary election, who arms the talks and who causes problems? But virtually every political party that is, virtually no political party that is uh, immune from such uh, accusation. Who handles the issue of sanity at campaign rallies? Yeah, yes, I think is supposed to, to look into all that, but the, the, the system itself, the system itself must begin to churn out legitimate people mm -hmm. who want things to work well. What should we expect from National Assembly? We should expect National Assembly to look into the pedigree of INEC under the current chairman who is um, standing um, uh, reappointment and then um, give him, give him um, support. What about the electoral give him support. Give him support in the sense that it seems to me that he, he, has, he has come out from the process of learning. The tutelage, he has, he has overcome that. It seems to me that he is making progress. And uh, he is he, he, he now on the threshold of history. If he doesn't do well for life... Yeah, what do you mean specifically? What, what support? What support he needs is to be reappointed. Of, of course. So what happens to the Electoral Act? Everybody wants something to be done about that. Everybody wants something to be done about the Electoral Act. It is the duty of the legislature to do something about the Electoral Act. And then it is expected that INEX will now make their presentation in any aspect and any area where they are having challenges. They will now come and present what they want. The legislature should now look into it. And the most importantly, for the president to even sign the act itself. Because even the last year of court that the last amendment of the Electoral Act was declined accent by Mr. President. Okay. So that is a major challenge. It All is right. not the INEC that will do that. It is the legislature that will show that the last Electoral Act, even if it means to tweak it and then bring it back to Mr. President for accent, so that INEC will now perform to its best optimal capacity. Maybe that is the support that everybody wants to see. The Electoral <laughs> Act changing above all else. Well, thank you for coming on. Always a pleasure. Many, Mr. Fred Zakov.